Welcome to the nurse station. Today we are going to learn about the endocrine disorders, diabetes insipidus, and syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone, also known as SIADH. So future nursing students or current nursing students, I really, really encourage you to look at your endocrine disorders and find the disorders that are correlated to the same hormone. For instance, these two disorders both are related to ADH, antidiuretic hormone. So make a chart because you will see as we go through this chart, if we have a, a low amount of this hormone, it's going to present symptoms that are opposite that if we were to have a high amount of the hormone, it's going to present symptoms. And typically they are opposite of one another, so it's better to understand the why as opposed to just memorizing a lot of assessment data. Um, for instance, Cushing's and Addison's are opposite of one another. Uh, hypothyroidism versus hyperthyroidism. I really encourage you to think about what hormone directly causes the problem and what does that hormone do. Create a chart and compare and contrast the two disorders. So, we're talking about the posterior pituitary gland today, which secretes antidiuretic hormone, aka ADH. You might have also heard of it as vasopressin. I want you to think antidiuretic, antidiuresis, meaning no pee or holding on to pee. So if you think about that, the purpose of ADH is to reabsorb water in the kidneys, okay? If we have really low levels of ADH, like diabetes insipidus, we have nothing to, no hormone to tell us, hey, you need to reabsorb that water. So it's letting all that water out into our urine, causing a lot, large amount of dilute urine for these clients. Versus the opposite, SIADH, we have a large amount of ADH hormone. So this, again, antidiuresis or holding on to pee hormone, if you have it in a client in large amounts, they are gonna retain and retain water as opposed to uh, peeing it off. You know, we always want that homeostasis, that normal balance of ADH levels. <clears throat> in general, with all endocrine disorders, we can diagnose the, them using these tools. Of course, the serum hormonal levels, we can see if they have high or low levels in their bloodstream. MRI and CT scans can also uh, verify or diagnose uh, endocrine disorders. And just a universal thing to think about. We are talking with endocrine about hormonal imbalances. So if we have a low hormone, hormonal imbalance, aren't we gonna do things to try to elevate that hormonal level? Well, remember, if we're bringing it up, we can always throw them into the other disorder. We can give them too much of the hormone, for instance. Or let's say they have too much hormone and we're trying to regulate it. We can take um, glands out. We can take, for instance, the thyroid gland out is a very common surgery. We take that gland out, we can throw them into two low levels of that hormone, if that makes sense. I don't even know if that's proper English, two low levels. But you get what I'm saying. Um, so always think about when we're treating our disorders, we can always throw them into the opposite of the disorder we're treating, just because it's hormonal imbalances, okay? <clears throat> so let's begin. Diabetes insipidus, low ADH. So the hormone that we need to hold on to water in our kidneys is very low. So we are not holding on to water in our kidneys. All of our water is being excreted in very dilute urine, large and large amounts of dilute urine. So this client's output is very high. And what we're gonna think about, the signs and symptoms that we correlate with diabetes insipidus is signs of dehydration. The polyuria leads to signs and symptoms of dehydration. So let's think about how a dehydrated client looks. Their blood pressure is low. They can be hypotensive because they're losing all that urine. Their heart rate is high. They're tachycardic because we now have low fluid volume and our heart is trying to pump that fluid that we still have in our body faster and faster to try to still perfuse our tissues, our organs. They can have problems with orthostatic hypotension. So when they change positions, their blood pressure can drop. And as nursing students and nurses, we always think about safety with that. We'll talk about that in one second. Dried mucous membranes, tinted skin turgor, meaning if I were to pull their skin up, we want elastic, we want it to go right back. We want it to recoil or bounce back. 
If you're dehydrated, you don't have that elasticity. Remember, this is not the best place to check skin turgor. You always want to check it over the sternum, the clavicle, the forehead, um, because those are the places that lose elasticity last. But if I were to check um, the skin turgor on the sternum, it could stay tinted or raised because they have very low fluid in their body. Weakness, muscle pain, polydipsia or thirst because they've lost a lot of fluid. Headaches, and they can have weight loss with these clients. Um, I'm just going to go to the opposite end because you're going to see truly this is a low amount of ADH. If we look at a high amount of S um, ADH levels with SIADH, you're going to see how opposite these clients look. So don't just memorize all these symptoms. Just understand ADH, again, holds on to water in my kidneys. Now I have too high of levels. I have so much ADH in my bloodstream and my body that I'm holding on to way too much water. So what is this client going to look like? This client is going to have all urea, meaning they are not peeing a lot. They're not peeing appropriate amounts, scant amounts of urine. So if we're holding on to all this water, the client that we are going to think about is a client that looks like or is in signs and symptoms of fluid volume overload. So what do these clients look like? They look like the opposite of dehydration. Their blood pressure is really high because they're holding on to all this fluid. The heart is still pumping really fast. Don't get confused and think that the heart rate is opposite because all this fluid just needs to be circulated and circulated so it doesn't back up to, into places such as your lungs. So your heart's trying to pump very fast to kind of circulate all this fluid that is being retained in your body. They can have edema, they can have jugular vein distension, they can have crackles in their lung if the fluid does uh, back up into their lungs. Um, mental status changes is something big to look at and we're going to talk about sodium levels in one second. We need to look for potential seizures and I cannot believe I spelled seizures wrong. It is S-E-I-Z-U-R-E-S. We need to look for weight gain because remember, again, they are holding on to all this fluid. So let's think about our labs. Again, DI, you're going to think about signs and symptoms of dehydrated client. SIADH, you're going to think about signs and symptoms of a fluid volume overload client. Let's think about our labs. Going back to diabetes insipidus, ADH, you're thinking about a dehydrated client. They lost all their water. Remember, ADH only controls water. We're not talking about aldosterone, which controls sodium and water. ADH only controls water. So this client has peed off all their water. Their sodium levels are going to be very high and very concentrated in their blood. They're going to have hypernatremia. Let's think about all the lab values that are associated with fluid volume status. With fluid volume status, you should always be thinking about serum osmolality, urine osmolality, and urine-specific gravity. I don't ever put lab levels because every resource can be slightly different. Please make sure you know your lab levels according to the resource that your instructor gives you. But let's think about what each one of these do. All of these lab values measure particles. So if you just think about it, they all measure particles. And if there's a lot of particles, the lab values go up. If there's a, uh, not a lot of particles, the lab values go down. All you got to think about is where are the particles and what is the disease doing. So serum osmolality, the amount of particles in your blood. This is a dehydrated client that just lost a lot of water. Aren't the particles in their blood going to be highly concentrated? Yeah, that's why the serum osmolality goes up. Now let's think about the urine. The problem is the client is peeing large amounts of dilute urine. Remember, with urine, this client is just losing water, right? ADH only controls water, so they're peeing off all this water. The particles in the urine are going to be very diluted. So the particles in the urine or your urine osmolality levels will go down, and urine-specific gravity again measures particles in the urine. So again, those particles will be diluted, so that lab value will go down. On the opposite end, do you see how they're opposites? This client in fluid volume overload is retaining all this water. So let's think about the sodium level in their blood. They are holding on to all this water. Won't it dilute the sodium level in their blood? Absolutely. 
They, we are concerned for these clients about hyponatremia, hyponatremia. That's why seizures is a big risk factor for these clients. Let's think about the particles in their blood again, serum osmolality. All this water we're holding on to has now diluted the particles in our blood, decreasing our serum osmolality levels. And then last, let's think about the urine. Remember, this client is characterized by low urinary output and it's very concentrated. That concentrated alone will always tell you how your urine levels will look. The urine osmolality is gonna be high because your urine's concentrated. Your urine specific gravity, again, measures particles, is gonna be high because that urine is concentrated. So DI, low levels of ADH, think signs and symptoms of dehydration. SIADH, high levels of ADH, think signs and symptoms of fluid volume overload, and it will also help you understand your lab values. So always we're going in our nursing process, of course the etiology or causes, now we have our assessment data, our nursing assessment. This is potential manifestations or assessment that we can collect on this client based upon their disease process. Well now, based upon our assessment data, don't we have to know how to act? So on the back of the board, I talked about all our nursing actions or nursing interventions. What do we need to do for these clients to keep them safe? So diabetes insipidus, again, think about a dehydrated client, all right? We, of course, need to monitor vital signs. We need to monitor their lab values. You need to be looking at sodium levels. Remember, they are hypernatremic. We need to be looking at all the levels that monitor fluid volume status, such as urine os or serum osmolality, urine osmolality, eyes and nose, because these diseases are characterized either by excessive urine output or very little urine output. And remember, our clients have to make 30 mLs of urine per hour to show that we have good kidney function. Daily weights. Weights are a great indicator of fluid volume status. Again, when we do daily weights, we need to do them at the exact same time every day in the same clothes on the same scale to make sure that they're accurate. And of course, resources vary as to when you need to report weight gains, but um, multiple NCLEX resources say report a weight gain of three pounds or more, three, three pounds or more in one day or five pounds or more in one week. So always do your daily weights. And we need to be assessing neurological status. We need to assess how oriented are they? Is there a change in their behavior? Is there confusion? Are they getting agitated? Because remember, back to fluid and electrolytes, anytime we mess with sodium levels, whether it be hypernatremia or hyponatremia, it can cause um, a change in our mental status. So do your neuro checks, ensure that your client neurologically is not changing. Um, keep safe. For diabetes insipidus, when I think keep safe, I'm really thinking about that orthostatic hypotension. I'm really thinking, I need to help them if they need to get out of bed. I need to educate them to change positions slowly. I need to make sure they sit down quickly if they feel dizzy or lightheaded. So make sure to keep this client safe. And when I think safety for DI, I think orthostatic hypotension. The problem with this client is they're peeing off all their fluid. So of course we would give them fluids. We would administer IV fluids to help combat the problem. And then always we have hormonal replacements we can give these individuals. So we have low levels of ADH or vasopressin. Medications we can administer is vasopressin. More commonly you see desmopressin acetate given. Um, and again, watch, watch the client. There's, you can give this in multiple subcute injections, so educate the client about how to administer or um, give these um, injections. Going back to pharmacology, we now are given ADH, so you need to watch out for signs and symptoms of water intoxication and things like that. On the opposite end, SIADH. Again, you are thinking of fluid volume overload client that has way too much ADH levels. So very similar. Do you see how similar this is? You need to monitor vital signs. They're hypertensive, they're tachycardic. When we give treatment, such as the meds we're gonna talk about in one second, we should see those vital signs start to regulate. Monitor their lab values. They are hyponatremic, because we, have we haven't diluted it, but the ADH levels have diluted their sodium levels. We need to monitor that. Eyes and O's. These clients are making scant amount of urine, oliguria we need to still ensure that they're getting 30 mLs per hour. 
It might be important, of course, with both. I didn't talk about BUN and creatinine, but these, these lab values could directly influence the kidneys. So monitor BUN and creatinine levels. Make sure that this client's kidneys are not compromised. Again, daily weights, neuro status, um, neuro status. Monitor, do neuro checks. Make sure they're responding appropriately. They can have mental changes. They can have a change in behavior, a change in level of consciousness. So when I think keep safe for this client, first off, that anytime you have a change in behavior, you better keep them safe, especially with activity. But these clients are at a high risk for seizures. So we need to place clients on seizure precautions. Make sure to assess, again, their status neurologically. And let's talk about a fluid volume overload client. It makes a lot of sense that we place them on fluid restrictions. Typically, we always encourage clients to be drinking two to three liters of water per day. That's not appropriate for this client. They already have too much water that's diluting all their particles. They can be placed on fluid restrictions. They could be on a fluid restriction of less than 1,000 ml in one day. So we could place them on fluid restrictions. And same with medications to increase hormonal levels. We have medications that are antagonist. So vasopressin, vasopressin receptor antagonist, these are medications to decrease their serum, serum ADH levels or to regulate that ADH level and bring it down in their body. We also, because this is a client that is in fluid volume overload, we need to give them medications to get rid of that excess fluid. These clients could be placed on diuretics and typically you see loop diuretics because we need massive diuresis. So we're thinking about our furosemide, for instance, AKA Lasix, but remember we always need to know the generic names for the NCLEX. Um, and also sodium replacement. Again, they are hyponatremic. We like to, as nurses and as healthcare providers, replace sodium slowly so we don't cause any fluid shifts in the body. But I have seen with mental status changes that they can place clients on a hypertonic solution. So that would be your 3% sodium chloride, for instance, as an example, um, that we can administer because remember, your typical fluid, normal saline is always 0.9% normal saline, right? So 0.9% is sodium. Well, now we are popping up to 3%. That's why it's hypertonic. There's a lot more sodium or more particles in this solution. So yes, it would help with um, increasing the sodium levels in this client's body, uh, but again, be mindful to watch for fluid shifts in the body whenever you're given a hypertonic solution. So I hope this has helped you all. I love endocrine. I love a lot of things, but I really do like endocrine. Um, and just remember with your endocrine disorders, if they are opposite, uh, please do a chart, compare and contrast one another.